are going to party. Party all. Hello friends, my name is Nanook Metal and today I would like to show you everything you need to know about the big oil heist in order to complete it. The day one of the heist is fairly straightforward, all you have to do is find the address which is located in one of the safes. Before that I'm going to kill every single guard and it's also not too hard and you can actually ECM rush this heist which I am going to do just to make sure that we don't fail it. It is however not necessary to ECM and if you would like to save an ECM in order to open up the ATMs in the basement you can totally do so. There is a guard who has seen a body outside but uh, that's not too bad he actually wasn't seen by any guards from upstairs and also even if the camera would have seen him just because I ECM rushed I dropped that ECM the camera w wasn't able to do anything. And as you can see I just worked my way through the house started with the first floor then went upstairs just killed all the guards one by one. The most important thing is just to make sure that they don't shoot first make sure you kill them before that and also make sure that you don't let them burn any of the intelligence. We'll talk about it later but there are different kinds of intelligence that you can pick up on day one and they can actually help you working out the correct engine and completing the day two of the heist. I have just killed everyone on the map so at this point it's pretty safe I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna go find the safes and drill through them usually up to three safes spawn and at least two saves will spawn. So make sure you inspect all of the house, you don't really want to uh, miss one of those saves and then you realize that the address is in there and, but you already drilled through the other one so now you have to wait for this one to be done and so on so on. The saves can spawn in the basement as you can see one of the saves was in there also on the first floor and as well as on the second floor but also on this deck outside so I'm just having a look around making sure that nothing is here and there is another intel lying there. Uh, but yeah apart from that doesn't look like there are three saves this time there's only two. Apart from the address you can also find money in the saves and there's actually quite a lot of loot in the big oil day one. You can find weapons that are lying all over the place that can be inside of the house but they can also be in one of those sheds outside. I'll show you where they are in a second. So there's that first shed on the left and the shed on the right. Check those out you might find money in there. Uh, as well as there is also a basement which has a lot of ATMs in there but if you want to open all of those you will actually need to bring a saw which is a viable option in this heist you don't really need to worry about the concealment because you're not going to do much sneaking in its classical terms you're just gonna kind of run through the building and just kill everyone. Let's have a look at the intelligence this is the first piece of intel and Bane usually tells you what it is or at least hints you however in this time he didn't say what it exactly is and I suspect that it's not going to be that useful. However, hopefully with this piece of intelligence is going to be something good. There we go, Bane says that it's codes and when he says it's codes it's actually shutter codes, that's what he's referring to. There are shutters on the day two of the big oil, they're located on the second floor and sometimes they're in a closed position, sometimes they're in the open position. So with the codes you will be able to either close and open them. You really want to keep them closed, however, in order to work out if there is a server upstairs you'll need to have them open and then you look from the outside see what's inside there. So getting the codes is not the worst thing in the world. There are however things that are pretty useless for example a photograph of the scientist or a photograph of the guards. It is not going to be of much use there are other things like the blueprints that are also not that great. What we're looking for is to get the key card. Uh, plane keys, possibly shutter codes and there is also another thing that actually will help us with working out the correct engine. I'll talk about finding the correct engine when we get to the day two. Right now there is nothing much left for me to do but to wait for those drills to be done. One of the saves is already completed so I'm gonna go and check if it has the address. Indeed it does. So we can just grab that address and go. Excellent, we've completed day one, now we're in the pre-planning section of the day two. I found the key card, as you remember. Also we've got the shutter codes and the last thing that I found out was the photograph of the scientist. Not the most useful thing, he's the only civilian who potentially will be walking around somewhere around there and we already know that he's there so finding that piece of intelligence is less than ideal. As I mentioned earlier I would have much rather had the plane keys spawn instead of that photograph of the scientist. However I'm still pretty happy about the keycard that will allow me to open up the server room with the keycard rather than having to open it with the ECM and I will need the ECMs at the end of the heist because you cannot actually 
complete this heist fully in stealth. At the point where the helicopter will arrive, the alarm will go off anyway. However, most of the time I end up raising the alarm a little bit earlier, but with the help of the ECMs, we are going to uh, be able to wait to prolong that time until the alarm is raised for as long as we can. My first objective is to find the server room, and right now I'm trying to look in that small gap. As you can see, these are the shutters I was talking about. And although the shutters are closed, I can kind of see through that gap below, and when you will be playing the game, you should be able to see what is inside of the server room just through that gap. Basically, right now, I am seeing that the server is indeed in there, because the server eggs that are located at the back wall, they've got those little blue panels and I can actually see them through the gap and if the server racks weren't there, the server wasn't there at all, uh, the blue panels wouldn't be there. Uh, for example here you can actually see it much clearer, the shutters are open and you can tell that there are no server racks, there are no monitors, look out for those. If there, there are no uh, monitors, no server racks, the server room is not there. What I'm going to do now is actually open the shutters on the second floor in front of the building and then come back outside and show you what the server room looks exactly like when you're looking at it with the open windows. And this is what I've done off camera, right now I'm coming back to the window. You will be able to see that the shutters are now open and it is actually much much easier to see those monitors, the server racks, I know for the fact, I'm 100% sure that the this is where the server room is. Unfortunately, I have to go back there now again and uh, open up the room and start the hack. With the hacked computer, we will gain access to the basement and we will be then able to grab the engine and escape. I have killed one guard while I was on my way to opening those shutters. And this is generally a reasonably good idea if you end up killing like three guards. That's not too bad. It actually will make things easier for you to do while you're going to be stealthing around. And uh, you also need to keep in mind, when you kill four guards, another extra guard will come through. Therefore, killing four guards is probably not the best idea, because you're not going to benefit from killing that fourth guard. This is why I usually keep the fourth pager just in case of an emergency, in case I uh, get spotted without uh, actually intending to be spotted by that guy. I've used my key card and opened the server room, now I'm going to hack it. Keep in mind that the guards coming from outside from that room across, they will actually see into the server room when they're coming like this, they will actually see the server room and the hack taking place. And this is why it is important for you to stay around here because once they see the computer being hacked, they will try to raise the alarm. At the same time, what I need to do is to find the clipboards which are scattered across the house, there are two of them, and what they have on them is the information in regards to the engine that we will need to steal. Remember there are 12 engines and we only need one, the actual working prototype. I need to know what is on those clipboards before I enter the basement because once you open the basement door, guards can actually see the door being opened and they will also try and raise the alarm. This is why once I go in there, I want to know, uh, find out quickly what the engine is and be able to grab it and go. The evidence can be upstairs and this is where I'm checking right now. Doesn't look like it is anywhere, but I'm going to make sure that it is actually not here. I don't really want to come back here after I'm done. Ooh, guard. Let's deal with him and I'm going to check this last room. The clipboard is actually on the other side. And what it says on it is H. So usually the clipboard will say either H or 2H or 3H. This tells us how many hoses are going to be connected to that big blue can that is part of the engine. For example, have a look at this photo, there are two hoses connected to the big blue can and every single engine will have that blue can. In our case, the clipboard said H, which means only one hose will be connected to the big blue can and this is what we are going to be looking for. This is one of the three things that you need to work out before you can determine the correct engine. Apart from the big blue can that every engine will have, it will also have a smaller gas can and each engine will contain a different gas, it can either be nitrogen, deuterium or helium. Depending on the gas contents, it will be of different colors, so for example, if it is a nitrogen can, it is going to be a yellow can, if it is a deuterium can, it's going to be a blue can, and if it's a helium can, it's going to be a green one. I've hit this body and it's an alright place given that the shutters are closed because if the shutters were open, the guards outside would have actually been able to see the body. 
And if the shutters were open, I didn't have a code, I probably would have hit the body somewhere here, but it probably wouldn't be the best place to keep the bodies in. The hack is almost completed and once it is done, I'm gonna go downstairs and look for that second clipboard because it doesn't look like it is anywhere upstairs. Remember that the guards here will walk outside, you can see one over there, and also they go through the doors and there are also a lot of open windows and this is why stealthing through here is a little bit difficult, however, if you're careful and you keep that all in mind, you should be alright. Now I'm looking for that last clipboard, it can be anywhere on basically on any surface like a table or a bench or something like that. Here you can also hide the bodies if you ended up killing someone on the first floor, this is where you can put them into that cinema behind the couch, the bodies won't be seen there, but that would be the only safe place where you can hide the bodies without them being seen. It doesn't look like the intelligence is anywhere downstairs and I believe it's going to be in the basement and this is why I'm gonna go in there. At the same time I'm looking, oh there's that piece of intelligence and it says nitrogen so we already know that it's going to be the yellow can, let's double check with the whiteboard. If you find it hard to work out what the engine is as you go, what you can do is use the big oil calculator tool and you just basically punch in the information that you have and it will tell you what the right engine is. Going back to our heist, I still need to find out what is the correct pressure and basically one of the computers, uh, excuse me sir, he's like being obstructive and everything, let's put him away. Here's that computer and what we need to know from it is whether that arrow next to the pressure is pointing to the left or to the right. And if the arrow is pointing to the left, you're going to be looking for the engine that reads below 404 barrels. However, if the arrow is pointing to the right, obviously you are going to look for the pressure that reads more than 404 barrels. This engine is not the correct one because it has too many hoses connected to the big blue can. And so is this one because it doesn't have the little yellow nitrogen can. However, let's have a look at this engine, so it has that one cable that we're looking for connecting to the big blue can, it also has the yellow small nitrogen can, and lastly the reading there says less than 404 barrels of pressure, so we've got 3 out of 3 things correct, and we have determined the correct engine that we need to steal. I'm now going to pack it up and then run and light up a flare. The flare can spawn in two different places, it can either spawn a stupid guard. Let's just leave him there, I'm going to drop an ECM in case any other guard sees that guard, but the flare can spawn either by the pool side over here or it can also spawn on the um, air airstrip where we have initially spawned. Hopefully the guard is not going to shoot me down because he will actually down me. Let's go ahead and kill them both, unfortunately I have too many pagers to answer now, I've got two guards that I've killed and only one pager available to me and this is why I'm going to continue with the ECM rush. Right now I'm gonna go and pick up the engine, bring it closer to the pool site. Overall it's not too bad, the helicopter is going to arrive rather soon and as I mentioned earlier at that point the alarm would have gone off anyway. The engine is rather difficult and I'm in an exposed position right now and this is why it's nice to still be in a stealth situation right now while no guards are here, no law enforcers, no additional police have spawned that might be shooting at me right now, I can just carry that engine. There's actually a safe spot where I'm going to hide, it's a very very secure place. The only persons who can come there are the dozers as far as I can tell, however if they do come I can always bail and still evade them. So here's the alarm, it's gone off, the assault will start rather soon because it's a death wish difficulty after all and a lot of enemies are going to be here. However, I should be relatively safe in here. Hopefully the chopper will arrive soon so I can just get rid of the engine, be a little bit mobile. There's the helicopter. Actually, I came very very quickly at perfect timing. And what I'm going to do now is just drop the engine off and this is where I'm going to hide behind this chair. As weird as it looks, it seems like the enemies don't come here, they're not gonna shoot you from here. Very, very safe place overall. If I ended up getting the plane keys on day one, I actually would have been able to escape and not have to wait for the helicopter to arrive back. However, because I didn't get them, I have to wait for the engine to be dropped off. You can see enemies coming down from the roof, but they're not gonna be a problem. 
The engine has just been dropped off now. Bane will confirm that this is indeed the correct one. Unfortunately, he won't send back up. He won't send the rescue helicopter until that. And all we can do is just sit here and wait it out. In the meanwhile, I also have to mention that sometimes it is going to be much easier to work out what the right engine is. For example, sometimes you can find this piece of intelligence and you will be able to see this document in pre-planning. And when you see this document, know that your engine will contain three cables and blue gas can or deuterium. The only thing you will need to find out is what is the correct pressure. Bane has confirmed that the engine is indeed correct and the helicopter is now here and what I'm going to do is just run away. Hopefully I'm not gonna get shot up. There are a little bit of enemies here, but it's all down to luck right now whether the dodge will work or not. I ended up having a quarter of my health. Very, very close call. However, I managed to escape at the end. And this is it for this tutorial. I believe I've covered every single detail. However, if you still have questions, let me know in the comments down below. I will be very happy to help you out. And also, if you have any other heist requests or any other questions in regards to Payday 2, once again, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more stuff like this, but also share this video with your friends because good people need to watch good videos. Lastly, tune in on my live Twitch streams. They take place on the weekend and you can find more information about them on my Twitch page. I usually put an announcement into the feed in regards to when I'm going to stream. I thank you for watching. I will see you later. Bye bye.